Hello and welcome to Piano with Georgia. I'm Georgia and in today's video we are going to continue our theme about reading music. However, we are going to step back from the details of sheet music and talk about another option that is out there, the lead sheet. So hop on your bench or chair and let's get started. less detail of exactly what to play when, but they can also be a bit overwhelming as there is much less detail of exactly what to play when. There are a few main things to know as we dive into playing off of a lead sheet. First, what information is given versus what information is not given. Second, common tools composers and arrangers use to write as little as possible. Third, making it simpler or more challenging to play. And finally, finding lead sheets for the songs you want to play, or basically some good resources. The lead sheet gives you the same basic information as sheet music, time signature, key signature, rhythm, notes of the melody, but it stops there. Instead of writing in all sorts of harmony notes, you'll simply see an alphabet letter above some of the measures. These letters tell you what chord to play at different moments in your melody. Let's look at an example of a song that I think you will be very familiar with, Let It Be by the Beatles. You can see that your melody is completely written out and all of the lyrics are also right under the specific notes that match what is being sung. The time signature tells us that we can expect four beats in every measure, and we are counting quarter notes as our main beat. There are no sharps or flats written here, so the key signature is pretty easy. Unless it's written in otherwise, we are going to play the white key version of all of the notes. The rhythm of the melody notes tell us how long to hold each note. On top of the staff, you see alphabet letters. These are telling us what chord to play that will sound good with our melody. In this example, things are kept very simple, and in fact, You'll notice that if you play the rhythm of the melody exactly as it is on this music, it doesn't quite sound exactly right. It sounds a little, how shall we say it, square? This is a typical problem. The rhythm you see on a page is designed to be easier to read, but trust your ear and feel complete freedom to play it the way you actually know it goes. Now here's an example that goes the other way. This melody includes a lot of very detailed rhythms that you may feel intimidated or confused by. Use the lead sheet to give you the notes of what to play, but again, trust your ear. The main rhythms you'll need are longer holds. None of us want to hold long notes long enough, so watch out for those whole notes. Now, what about these other things? This little number one and number two under these brackets. This spot where there are a couple of dots. These are symbols that have been invented to save space on paper. It's really nice to have a song on one or two pages instead of four, and also to save composers having to rewrite the same exact notes that they have already written before. Vocabulary time. First and most simply, we have repeat dots. Here's one and here's another one. Think of these dots like parentheses 
When you see one facing to the left, that bounces you back. Default to going back to the beginning, but if a composer wants you to go back to a different spot, there will be another repeat dot that now faces right, like this one. That's the exact spot where you go back to and you play from there. Next, we have first and second endings. Here's one right here, and here's one right here. Sometimes, most of what you play is exactly repeated, but the ending might be a slightly different transition to slightly different parts of the song. Enter the first and the second ending. Just as the name implies, the first time you play whatever is under the little bracket with the number one. This one. The second time, you completely skip what was under number one, and instead you go straight to your second ending, whatever is under the bracket with the little number two. Occasionally things get wild, and you might see a third ending. Just keep hopping to the ending that matches how many times you've gone back. But that is much less common. Moving on, you may see the words DC Alfine or DS Alfine. Both of these are telling you to go back and play until you see the word fine, which in Italian means end. DC means you go back to the beginning. Whee! DS means you go back to a specific spot where you see a symbol that looks a bit like a fancy letter S. Finally, you may see the words DC Alcoda, like this one, or DS Alcoda. Just like before, you are going to go back to either the beginning or back to the S, the Segno symbol. But this time, you watch for a coda symbol. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a bullseye. At this point, you are going to jump ahead to a spot that will have a matching symbol. There it is. And that goes on into what is usually a final section of the song. Now that you understand the musical roadmap of where to go when, let's talk about ways of making it simpler or more challenging, fancier, to play. The first thing to do that makes things simpler is that if you see any extra little numbers, there's a seven, there's a six, or any slashes like this, you ignore them. Play the chord that goes with the alphabet letter that is first. Remember to play a major chord unless there is a little M beside a letter, like this one. The little M means minor. Another way of indicating a minor chord in some versions of lead sheets is a dash. There's one right here. Notice in our simpler version of Let It Be, exactly what this arranger has done is exactly what we just talked about. But frequently, you won't be able to find a simple version, so I think it's important that you know how to make a simpler version yourself. The second thing you can do to simplify is if there are a lot of chords really clustered together like this. Experiment with leaving some of them out and keeping the same chord longer. Sometimes you lose too much, but frequently it's just fine with fewer chords. What about making it harder? First, include everything we just left out. And let's talk about how to decode all that extra information. If you see a number 
That means to add an extra note, this is the interval above your alphabet letter that is there. Remember that lesson on intervals? It's about to pay off. By far, the most common number you'll see will be a seven. So, for example, to play an F7 chord, you would add the note that is a seventh above your F. going to add an E. But hold on a second. To further complicate things, we have major and minor versions of many of our intervals, including our example here of the seventh. The default is to add a minor seventh, so E flat. Unless they write the letters M A J or a little triangle. How did geometry get into our music? And here we have an example, F M A J seven. So this would be F A C for our classic F chord. Then the M A J seven would add an E. So in this part of the song, it would sound like One other tried and true method is to try out both and go with what sounds better to your ear. So play your F with an E, play your F with an E flat. They both sound fine out of context, but in the context of your song, one or the other will sound better. The other numbers you will see, a two or six, default to the major version of the interval unless they write the letters M-I-N, which means a minor version of whatever interval they are wanting as an extra note. If you see a four or a five, well, there's only one version of those, they're perfect. If you see nines, elevens, or thirteens, just count them up to get the letter name of the note you add, then put that alphabet letter into a spot that feels comfortable to reach. Occasionally, you will see a number with a little flat in front of it. That means go down a half step from the major or perfect version of the interval. If you see a sharp next to a number, go up a half step. Here we have an F6. So we are going to add F, G, A, B, C, D to our chord. Here, Woo, we have a wild one. B dash seven sharp five. This is a lot of information. So let's go through it. Read left to right and take one little piece of information at a time. First, we have a B as our foundation or root. So let's find a B. That dash means it's a B minor chord. Let's build that minor chord. Remember that lesson on major and minor chords? B, D, F sharp. Okay, now we have a seventh. Whew, what's a seventh above B? B, C, D, E, F, G, A. There's no little M, A, J, so we need the minor seventh which is what A already is. So, B, D, F sharp, A. Now, we have a sharp five. Our fifth above B is our F sharp. So, if we raise that half step, or sharp it, we have a G. So our notes will be B, D, G, and A. You can space these notes out or play them in any different order, but this is your note palette. 
that they want to give you the sound to make the sounds sound like the real song. All the same chord. When you see a slash by an alphabet letter, followed by another alphabet letter, this is telling you to play the chord you know, but put that second alphabet letter on the bottom instead of the classic alphabet letter that is the name of your chord. So here we have a C slash E. Our C chord is C, E, G. You know this guy. They want you to play that C chord, but they want an E on the bottom. Creates a different sound. You could play it with both hands like this, or you could play it with one hand like this. We still have C, E, and G. Usually this will be a note that is already part of your chord, but sometimes it's an extra note that adds some nice color in the bass. Frequently playing this note on the bottom adds a cool bass line. And there's a great example of that in our Let It Be, right here. You will notice we have an E on the bottom, a D on the bottom, and then a C on the bottom. Those are right in a row. It would sound like, and it'll sound like the Let It Be that you know when you play it like this. The final way we will make things fancier today is to challenge yourself with adding more to your left hand chords. Try adding some rhythm, patterns, or spread out the notes of your chord. This will feel more challenging to your coordination, but it will also be super satisfying and change the sound and feel of your song. One other option that is not to be forgotten is your option to sing the melody and use both hands to play the notes of your chords. Singing and playing at the same time is not automatically easy. You are involving an entirely different group of muscles and mental processing that goes with it. But if you love to sing, do not give up. Just try a small section and repeat it over and over until you can sing and play something with your hands. Keep the piano part simple, then gradually make it feel more complicated. And now, finding the songs you love and you want to play. Search the word lead sheet with the title of your song and you will probably have a lot of options pop up. Sheet Music Direct, Music Notes, and several others will sell lead sheets by the song. You can also find books that are lead sheets. They are commonly called fake books, which I thought for a long time was because you fake your left hand, but actually they are called fake books because they are derived from the tradition of working musicians to have large books of illegally copied music, denying the copyright owner's payment. Berkeley School of Music made a legal version and called it a real book. Most of these books are huge, but the print is very small. 
MuseScore and NoteFlight are two resources that allow you to get one version, frequently for free, and then change the key using their notation software. If you are wanting to sing and play, this is fantastic, as the key we play in matters way less than the key we sing in. If you ever feel yourself straining to sing a high note, or deep trying to sing a low note in your song, that means you need a different key. If the notes feel too high, you need to start on a chord that is a lower alphabet letter or a lower key, and vice versa. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me today. I hope the mystery of how to interpret a lead sheet has been solved or at least assisted. As always, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment to let me know of things you might need help with.